Hi guys! In this video we're going to be looking at half-life, finding the half-life graphically, finding the half-life graphically example, and then we're going to finish with a summary. The half-life is a useful property of a radioactive source. We know that the number of radioactive nuclei in a sample will decrease over time as they decay. So as time passes, radioactive nuclei will decay and become stable. And this means that the number of radioactive nuclei in a sample will decrease. One convenient way of measuring the rate of decrease of radioactive nuclei is by the half-life of a sample. The half-life of a radioactive sample is the time it takes for half of the radioactive nuclei in the sample to decay. So we start with n equals 16 nuclei, and if a half-life of time goes past, which we can represent by a small t subscript to a half, or a capital T subscript to a half, then there will be 8 radioactive nuclei left, because half of the radioactive nuclei will have decayed. We can equivalently say that half-life is the time for the activity or the count rate of a radioactive sample to halve. So here's a source of radiation being measured by a GM tube. And if a half-life of time goes by, the activity or count rate will have halved. And this is a way to measure the half-life of a radioactive sample experimentally. Every radioactive sample has a specific half-life which is always the same, independent of its sample size or external conditions. So the half-life is not affected by the number of nuclei, nor by the external conditions, such as temperature or pressure. It will remain constant. The half-life remains constant after each successive decay. So if we start with n equals 16 nuclei, and a half-life of time goes by, we then end up with 8 nuclei. And if we start with 8 nuclei, the time taken for the number of radioactive nuclei to halve is going to be exactly the same as it was before. So the half-life hasn't changed. Now we're going to look at finding half-life graphically. We can produce a graph showing the number of radioactive nuclei over time. It's an exponential graph. So on the y-axis we have capital N, which represents the number of nuclei. And initially it has a value of n naught. This is plotted against time t, which is measured in seconds. The half-life can be found from the time taken for the number of radioactive nuclei to halve from the graph. So initially we have n naught radioactive nuclei in the sample. And to find the half-life, we need to find the time taken for the number of radioactive nuclei to halve. And this represents the half-life of our radioactive sample. And you can see that it remains constant. The mass of a radioactive sample is proportional to the number of radioactive nuclei remaining. This makes sense because once a radioactive nuclei has decayed and become stable, it is no longer part of the radioactive sample. And this means that we can find the half-life from a graph showing the mass of a radioactive isotope remaining over time. So now we plot the mass of the radioactive sample remaining in grams, which has an initial value of m0, and we find the time taken for m0 to halve. And you can see that the half-life remains constant. We also know that the number of radioactive nuclei present is proportional to the activity of a source. The activity of a source, A, is equal to the decay constant lambda, which is a constant, times the number of radioactive nuclei present, N. This means that if we plot in a graph of activity against time, it's also going to be exponential. So this time on the y-axis, we have activity measured in units of becquerels, and on the x-axis we have units of time measured in seconds. We can find the half-life from the time taken for activity to half. So if the initial activity is a0, the time taken for it to half to a0 over 2 will be the half-life. 
we also know that the count rate is proportional to the activity. And the count rate is represented by C. We can find the half-life graphically in the same way by finding the time taken for the count rate to halve. So let's plot a graph of count rate against time. Remembering that count rate is measured in units of seconds to the minus one. And if its initial value is C naught, the half-life is going to be the time taken for the count rate to decrease to become C naught over two. We're now going to do an example of finding the half-life graphically. A graph of activity against time of a radioactive source is plotted. Find the half-life of the source using the graph. Step one is to remember the method of finding half-life from a graph of activity over time. There's an initial activity, A0, and the half-life is the time taken for this activity to decrease by half. So the time taken for it to become A0 divided by two. So this is the half-life. Step two, divide the initial activity by two. On the graph, we can see that the initial activity is 800. So the initial activity divided by two is equal to 800 divided by two, which is 400. Step three, find the time taken for the activity to reach half the initial activity. The initial activity is 800 and half the initial activity is 400. The time taken for the initial activity to halve is 1.4 seconds. And so now we can do step four, which is to write down the half-life. The half-life is equal to 1.4 seconds. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap of my smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.